the Ark of the Covenant captured. Now in those days the Philistines gathered into battle against Israel, and Israel went out to meet them in battle and encamp beside Ebenezer. The Philistines encamped in Aphek. And the Philistines prepared battle plans against Israel, and the battle turned against Israel, and the men of Israel fell before the Philistines. About four thousand men were struck down in the battle lines. And when the people came into the camp, the elders of Israel said, Why did the Lord cause us to be defeated today before the Philistines? Let us take the ark of our God out from Shiloh and let it proceed from the midst of us, and it will save us from the hand of our enemies. So the people sent to Shiloh, and from there they brought out the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, who is seated between the cherubim and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were there with the Ark. And when the Ark of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a loud voice. And the earth shook. Now when the Philistines heard the shout, the Philistines said, What? Is this great shout in the camp of the Hebrews? Then they understood that the ark of the Lord was in the camp. And the Philistines were afraid, for they said, These are the gods that have come into the camp. Woe to us! Deliver us today, Lord, for such a thing has never happened before. Woe to us! Who will deliver us from the hand of these mighty gods? These are the gods who struck the Egyptians with all the plagues in the desert. Be strong. And conduct yourselves like men, you Philistines, so that you do not become servants of the Hebrews, even as they previously served us. Conduct yourselves like men and fight them. So they fought them, and the men of Israel were defeated, and every man fled to his tent. There was a very great slaughter, and thirty thousand troops of Israel fell. The Ark of God was captured, and the two sons of Eli died, Hophni and Phinehas. The death of Eli. Then a man of Benjamin ran from the battle line, and on that day he came to Shiloh with his clothes torn and dirt on his head. Behold! When he arrived, Eli was sitting on a seat by the gate watching the road, for his heart was bewildered about the ark of God. And when the man entered the city and reported it, the city cried out. When Eli heard the noise of the outcry, he said, What is the sound of this outcry? And the man came quickly and told Eli. Eli was ninety years old, and his eyes looked up and he could not see. Then Eli said to the men standing around him, What is this roaring sound? Then the man who came quickly to Eli said to him, I am the one who came from the camp, who fled today from the battle. Line. And he said, What happened, my child? So the young man answered and said, The Men of Israel fled before the Philistines, and there was a great slaughter among the people. And your two sons died. And the ark of God was captured. And it came to pass, as Eli remembered the ark of God, he fell backward from the seat by the side of the gate and broke his back and died, for the man was old and heavy. He judged Israel for twenty years. Ichabod now Eli's daughter-in-law, Phinehas' wife, was pregnant, about to give birth. When she heard the news that the Ark of God was captured, and her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she crouched down and gave birth, for her labor pains came upon her. And in her time of delivery, when she was at the point of death, the women standing at her side said to her, do not fear, you have borne a son. But she did not answer, and her heart did not understand. Woe, Ichabod, 
is what she named the young boy, for the sake of the Ark of God, for her father-in-law, and for her husband. And they said, The glory of Israel is exiled from its home, for the Ark of God is taken. The Philistines take the Ark. The Philistines took the Ark of God and brought it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. And the Philistines took the Ark of the Lord and brought it into the house of their god Dagon. They set it by Dagon. And when the people of Ashdod arose early in the morning, they entered the house of Dagon, and they looked and beheld Dagon falling on its face in the presence of the Ark of God. So they raised Dagon and returned it to its place. And the hand of the Lord was heavy upon Ashdod. He tormented all within her borders, he smote them in their private parts. Then it came to pass, when they arose early in the morning, behold Dagon had again fallen on his face before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. And the head of Dagon and both the palms of his hands were broken off, each in front of the threshold, and both the wrists of his hands were leaning on the doorway, only the torso of Dagon remained. So to this day, the priests of Dagon and any who come into the house of Dagon do not tread on, but step over the threshold of the house of Dagon in Ashdod because of this. But the hand of the Lord was heavy on the people of Ashdod. He came upon them and in their ships. He brought forth disease among them. He infested their country with mice, and there was a great calamity of death in the city. And when the men of Ashdod saw how it was, they said, The ark of the God of Israel must not remain with us, for his hand is harsh upon us and Dagon our God. Therefore they sent and brought together all the lords of the Philistines in the same place and said, What shall we do with the ark of the God of Israel? And the people of Gath said, Let the ark of the God of Israel come to us. So the ark of God came to Gath. And it came to be, after it entered Gath, that the hand of the Lord came upon the city. An exceedingly great state of confusion struck the men of the city, both small and great. He struck them in their private parts, and they made for themselves images of these. Then they sent away the Ark of God to Ashkelon, and it came about, when the Ark of God came to Ashkelon, the people of Ashkelon cried out, saying, Why did you turn the Ark of the God of Israel toward us to kill us and our people. So they sent and gathered together all the lords of the Philistines and said, Send away the ark of the God of Israel and let it return to its own place, so it does not kill us and our people, for it came about that a widespread panic of death spread throughout the entire city. And the living and those not dying were struck in their private parts, and the outcry of the city went up to heaven. Notes from this page. 318 Eli accepts God's judgment even though it means his destruction. Despite the judgment, Eli still did nothing to correct his son's behavior. 3 19 20 Samuel was confirmed as God's prophet not merely because he heard God's voice but because he was willing to proclaim God's word even when it was unpleasant or uncomfortable. 4 1 The word Philistines is not used only to describe Israel's enemies, it is also a more generic term designating foreigner or Gentile. 4 3 4 The people did not realize that their defeat came from the hand of God, but rather then discovering why God allowed them to be defeated and repenting of their unfaithfulness, they think that having the ark with them will ensure that God is with them. 4 7 10 The Philistines were afraid of the presence of the ark, but conducted themselves like men and handed Israel a stunning defeat. 
418 The loss of the ark and his sons brought the loss of Eli's own life. 5 2 Dagon was the chief god of the Canaanites and was referred to as the father of Baal in Canaanite mythology. Dagon was represented by a figure that had the torso and head of a man, but the body of a fish. The name Dagon is derived from a word meaning little fish. The house or temple is mentioned later in 1 MC 10 83, 84. 5 4 The destruction of their idol was a sign to the Philistines that the God of Israel could not be possessed and subjected to their pagan beliefs. 5 8 The Philistine government was a loose confederacy of five cities, each ruled by a type of warlord. Each city was considered a seat of power. The five cities were Ashkelon, Ashdod, Ekron, Gath, and Gaza. 617. They were sometimes referred to as the Philistine. Pentapolis. 511 The Philistines had moved the ark to three of their five cities, hoping that eventually it would be subjected by a local deity.